This is the Proton Guru video practice for topic 4.2. These problems will give you practice on identifying products of addition reactions of conjugated diene. Some brief and straightforward reading to get you ready for these kinds of problems can be found in lesson 4.2 of the Organic Chemistry Primer by Professor Hujiri and co-authors. You can find other chemistry videos and ways to match up these videos to your course's textbook at protonguru.com. Our first problem simply asks us to provide all the possible addition products for the reaction shown here where we have this hydrobromic acid adding to this diene and to label the one to addition and one for addition product. The first step will simply be electrophilic addition of the proton. This will lead to the formation of a cation shown here and this initially formed carbocation has an additional resonance contributor shown here. The resonance hybrid is a good representation of where the positively charged carbons will be. This is important to know because the next step is going to be the coordination of the bromide anion. It will only be attracted to the carbons that have a positive charge, either that one that is in position 2 or coordination to this carbon which is at position 4 relative to carbon 1 to which the proton initially underwent electrophilic addition. If you do coordination to the carbon number 4, you will have the 1,4 addition product and this squiggly line indicates that the bromine could be pointed towards us or away from us, that's a chiral center, you get a racemic mixture of the two 1,4 addition products. If you have coordination to carbon number 2, as shown here, you would have the bromide again with the squiggly line representing that it could be coming towards us or away from us off of that chiral center and that's the 1,2 addition product. In the previous problem, our diene was symmetric. If we take a look back at it, you can see that there's a plane of symmetry straight down the center before we do the reaction, so either of these two double bonds would be equivalent to one another in our initial electrophilic addition step. In the case where there are two non-equivalent pi bonds, we must consider electrophilic addition to each of them individually. So this problem asks us to figure out all of the possible addition products considering initial electrophilic addition to either of the two pi bonds. So for the purpose of discussion, we will arbitrarily assign one of these to be called pi bond 1 and the other one to be called pi bond 2 on the right. Then we can look at the electrophilic addition. First, electrophilic addition to what we called pi bond 1, where the pi bond electrons are donated to that proton. And that leads to this initially formed carbocation, which has an additional resonance contributor that you can figure out by moving this pi bond into this space, and that leaves the positive charge on the carbon at the right. Likewise, if we did an electrophilic addition of the proton to what we're calling pi bond 2, we would get this initially formed carbocation, and it has an additional resonance contributor as well, where we've moved the pi bond here, and that leaves a positive charge on the leftmost carbon. Once we have each of the four possible resonance contributors, we then know which of the carbons has partial positive character in the structures. And now we can do the second step of the addition reaction, which is the coordination of the anion to the cationic carbon sites. And that will lead to the possible addition products we see here. These two structures on the left result from initial electrophilic addition to pi bond 1, and we have a 1,2 addition product resulting from that, as well as a 1,4 addition product resulting from initial electrophilic addition to pi bond 1. The two structures on the right are the 1,4 and 1,2 addition products resulting from initial electrophilic addition to the pi bond 2. And these are all the possible addition reactions for these structures. Another important concept coming out of our discussion of conjugated dienes is the concept of kinetic versus thermodynamic products. So here we are asked to draw the possible addition products for this simple 1,3-butadiene and then to label the kinetic and thermodynamic products. And then we're asked how we would change reaction conditions in order to favor each of these products. The first step is to draw the carbocation resulting from electrophilic addition. You can draw it reacting with the acid like this or you could do electrophilic addition to just the proton itself, as we did in the previous couple examples. That will lead to this initial carbocation, which has an additional resonance contributor, shown here. Next, we can do the coordination of the bromide to 
either carbon 2 or 4, the two positively charged carbons in the structure. And the products resulting from coordination would be the 1, 2 addition product shown here, or the 1, 4 addition product shown here. Now the kinetic product is always the 1, 2 addition product because of the proximity effect discussed in the primer. The thermodynamic product, though, sometimes is the 1, 2 product, sometimes the 1, 4. How do we tell? Well, the rule is that it is the most stable alkene. So if we look at this alkene, we say, well, there's one non-hydrogen substituent coming off of the doubly bound carbons. So it's a monosubstituted alkene. But this is a disubstituted alkene. That is more stable, and that is why it is the thermodynamic product. The manner in which we alter our reaction conditions to gain one of these specifically targeted reaction products would be to raise the temperature to favor the thermodynamic product. So we'd do the reaction at, say, 40C or 60C if we wanted to get this thermodynamic product as the major product. Whereas we would do the reaction at a lower temperature, maybe 0 centigrade, if we wanted to get the kinetic product. We should also note that this site in the kinetic product is a chiral center, and you'd get a racemic mixture of that product in th that case. And now armed with our knowledge of how the reaction temperature influences whether we get the kinetic or thermodynamic product as the major product, we can address some of these addition reactions to specific conjugated dienes. We're now asked for only the major products, not all the possible products. So if we consider the 1, 2 addition product, which is relatively easy to draw by numbering our pi conjugated system, add the proton to position 1, and then add the bromine to position 2. Or we can draw the 1, 4 addition product, in which case the pi bond moves to between carbons 2 and 3. We can very quickly sketch out the 1, 2, and 1, 4 addition products in this case. And at a low temperature, we should favor the kinetic product. And the kinetic product is always the 1, 2 product, so this will be our major product in this example. If we take the same substrate and do the reaction at an elevated temperature, say 40 or 60 centigrade, we would get the same possible outcomes, but at a higher temperature, we favor the thermodynamic product. The thermodynamic product is sometimes the 1, 2 product. It is sometimes the 1, 4 addition product. So we again have to look at our alkenes. If we look at this alkene, it has 1, 2 non-hydrogen substituents. It is a disubstituted alkene. But in the 1, 4 addition product, we have 1, 2, 3, 4 things coming off of the alkene that are not just hydrogens. That's a tetrasubstituted alkene and that is more stable. So because the higher temperature fares the thermodynamic or more stable product, this will be our major product in this example. Now let's take a look at another example. Here we have a dimethyl cyclohexadiene and we're reacting with hydrobromic acid and now we're using a low temperature which again we should remember will favor the kinetic product. So if we look at the possible addition products of this reaction, we number our pi conjugated chain as 1, 2, 3, 4. The 1, 2 addition product would look like this. The 1, 4 addition product would look like this. And you have two chiral centers in each of these. And these reactions are not stereospecific. So you'd have to use squiggly lines to indicate that here. You'd have mixtures of isomers in both cases. And here, because the low temperature favors the kinetic product, we know that the 1, 2 product is the kinetic product we would have this as the major product should we do this reaction in the laboratory. Taking the same substrate and doing the reaction at an elevated temperature could lead to a different outcome. We would have the same possible products, and now we will look and see our temperature favors the thermodynamic product. So we're just looking for the more stable alkene. If we look at this alkene and say, well, how many substituents does it have? One, two, three. So this is a tri-substituted alkene. If we look at the 1, 4 addition product, you only have one, two substituents coming off that are not hydrogens. The other two hydrogens are not drawn in the line bond structure. So this is the more substituted, more stable alkene in this case. So this is a case where this is our major product. And you can see that the major product for the addition to this substrate, this is a good illustration of the fact that the thermodynamic product could be the same as the kinetic product. This is the same product we determined would be the major product in our previous example that was done at a low temperature. 